Some of the best uh, friends of my father and my mother were great painters. And uh, their, their padrino of, of the wedding was Jose Nogales, one of the giant, giants of uh, painters. And uh, Luis Molledo. Luis Molledo was an incredible forger. He forged, he made his money forging great paintings and selling them all over Europe. They are Durer's and they are Raphael's done by Luis Molledo in museums all over the place. And he was a dear, dear friend of the family. I grew up uh, watching them. One of my favorite painters was Resendi. And he was from Sevilla. So I grew up loving, loving painting and observing them painting. And they would give me a few, Luis Molledo gave me some lessons when I was a little kid. And I love, I love painting. And as a matter of fact, uh, my mother thought that I would be a painter, a professional painter. But my real passion was for the guitar. And I never, I saw my talent on the guitar, and I never could really see my talent as a painter. I thought, I felt very mm, amateur, very, very... Mm. Yeah, but talking about pa passion, I hear that you have a very, very big passion for opera. I do, I do. But in painting, I loved it, and every... Um, I've talked a lot about my father, my relationship musically and guitaristically to him, but very deep and very strong was my connection to my mother. And that was uh, literature. I was homeschooled when I was a... Um, a child until I was, until I came to the, went to the United States. And um, I was homeschooled by my mother. Literature from early, early, early on. And uh, I, this, I remember the impact that books like La Vida es Sueño, to me, when I heard that, when I read that book, and I must have been really six, seven, um, it made an impact that to this day, it, I feel that my life was, and my, my concept, of how to deal with people is very much founded on that one play, 
la vida de sueño by Calderón de la Barca. When I was seven years old, my mother started to dictate to me Don Quixote. And when I was 12, we finished it. So she dictated the entire Don Quixote. And as I wrote it down, then we would write a chapter and then she would discuss with me the concept and guided me. And uh, my, my whole childhood was a mixture of these influences. My father with the music, my mother with the literature. Every Sunday, we would go to the museum. And the museum in Malaga has beautiful things, but it's a small museum. And one of the games that we played was to go and look at the very same painting and see what new thing I could find in that painting. And uh, then after the museum, we would go to the market and she would buy uh, flowers so that I could paint them. I would come home and I would see it and I would paint these flowers in a made a rather big collection of uh, oil paintings of flowers. And uh, so I love painting. And I did it when I came to the United States. I continued to paint. And then um, I got so busy that I, with music, with recordings and all of that, that I stopped it. And years later, babysitting my granddaughter, Leah, I asked her, do you want to paint with me? And she said, yes. So I put her in the car, we went and bought canvases and we bought paints and got art books and said, let's choose something we're going to make, we're going to copy a painting. And we went with her looking and she was just a tiny little girl. And she loved a painting by Diego Rivera. And it was a nude of a African-American lady. And we painted it. I said, okay, here, we're going to divide the canvas. And I showed her how to center the thing the, and make the drawings. And we started painting and that got me going again. So now whenever I have a little time, I paint either with my grandchildren and sometimes by myself. Yes, I have had, I'm like a cat. You have nine lives. I have nine lives and I've already used up two. <laughs> At least two that I know of. But uh, In, in Colorado, I was traveling with Christina and the daughters. My, my daughters, Angelina and Tina, and we were traveling through Loveland Pass. And it was very icy and the car spin out of control and fell backwards over the cliff and my father and mother were driving behind. My father said to my mother, Angelita, they've killed themselves. They've died. He pulled off and goes down to look and my car had gone, flown 30 feet 
bounce off the mountain and continue and then hit a tree, hit a tree and it stayed in the tree. It was completely the back of the car was around the tree and it stayed there. And uh, the first thing was my father looking out of the cliff and seeing that we were there and asking if we were alive. Are you alive? Yes. Yes, we are alive. Are your hands okay? Oh, said, my hands are perfect. Yes, show them to me. So I take my hands out of the car and show him the hands. And then he says, my Torres, my 1856 Torres is yours. And gave me his, his Torres then Actually, we were completely fortunate because a group of young boys that were uh, mountain climbing in the snow were behind my parents and they stopped and they had all kinds of ropes. So they threw ropes down and Christina, my ex-wife, my wife then, had broken her left arm. So they took her up. Then these young, they were teenagers. They were maybe 18, 19 years old. And there were three of them. Then they came and they took my daughters up. And I actually had to climb, I had to climb myself, holding the rope for about 50 feet with just one of the boys behind me, just making sure that I wouldn't, that I wasn't going to fall. Just giving me a sense of security that if I fell, he would grab me. And we all made it, and the car remained there. Three or four days later, we, we got the car and um, looked through the content. And I had two guitars on that trip. I had a Ramirez of Celine. Celine had left his guitar with me, and his Ramirez was destroyed, it was part of what received the shock. There was no piece bigger than maybe one or two inches. It was all smashed. Smashed, but I mean, destroyed. And I was playing on my 1969 Hermann Hauser. My guitar was gone, my Hauser was gone. And one of the young boys that had helped us, he had remained with us and take care of the children. And he just stayed from the time, the moment of the accident, he stayed with us helping. And I said, oh, my house is gone, but I figured it had fallen down and there was a creek at the bottom. I thought it was gone forever. And uh, I, I felt bad, but I was so thankful to be alive. And that my family was alive and that the thought of recovering that instrument never crossed my mind. But this boy disappeared. And the next day, he comes back, he knocks in the door of the hotel and has my guitar. He has my house. He had gone back and the snow had fallen more. It had covered completely, but he knew more or less where it was. 
and there was just a little piece of the guitar case sticking out. He saw it, got it, and brought it. And I was so incredibly happy. I kissed him, I hugged him, I opened it, and the only thing that had happened, a little crack on the top. But nothing bad. And I took it out, I played it, and I said I wanted to give him something. Tom, I give you whatever you want. He says, all I want is you show me how to play something on the guitar. So it ended up to make it short. He flew back with us and stayed in my house two or three months studying guitar with me. And he became a guitarist. And that was, he became no that, yeah. And his name was guitarist. professional guitarist Tom Cameron. Okay. Oh yeah. Incredible. God has funny ways of directing us. Why is it that uh, sometimes when you travel with the family, you guys would wear football helmets in the car? They actually were motorcycle helmets. And this was an idea, it, it was, uh, was early on. And um, we were driving near Albuquerque and we witnessed a horrible accident with mortalities. And Selim thought, we are going to wear football, no, uh, motorcycle, motorcycle helmets. So we were in this truck with the camper and wearing motorcycle helm helmets. And we did that for quite a while. And we would just, he felt if race car drivers and motorcycle people can save a lot of lives like that, we are going to do it. And you would practice? Yes. In the camper with a motorcycle? With a motorcycle helmet. And one time, I tell you a story about the motorcycle helmets. Okay. We went to play a concert in Upper New York State. It was very cold, it was snowing. And we played the concert, we go to the reception. And being from Spain in those days, we were not really that prepared for the cold weather. And we thought we we're going to go to the theater and it's a reception and back to the car. And so we were dressed only in tails. And we go to the party after the concert and then get back into the car, put our helmets on, and Celine is driving, and realized that he had made a mistake, and he was going away from the town. So he tried to back up, and the back wheels get caught, and we cannot move the car. So here it is, maybe one o'clock in the morning, 1.30 in the morning, and we start, he said, if we stay in the car, we're going to die. We're going to freeze. So we better walk. And so there's a light of a farm not that far away. So we start walking. And my mother says, this, if we keep the heads warm, you save... Uh, is much better. Mm -hmm. So put your helmets on because the helmets kept the ears and so and I thought but we cannot leave the guitars in. So here if you have this picture in your mind. The four of us 
the four boys dressed in tails with guitar cases, a motorcycle helmet, and my mother dressed in a nifni dress with a motorcycle helmet. <laughs> and we walk to this farmhouse in Upper State, New York. I call and a guy comes out and he has a shotgun. <laughs> and he looks at us and says, what the hell are you? <laughs> Not who, but what? <laughs> and we, we became, he, he, when we told him what had happened, he invited us, his wife woke up, came, make us breakfast, and he took Celine with his tractor <laughs> to pick up the, the car. Wonderful. And we remained friends until he passed away. A great composer, Bach, a musician that I really admire, my father. The book that I would take with me to a desert island is Don Quixote, a public figure that I admire, Gandhi. If I had not been a guitarist, I would have chosen to be a painter. When I'm not playing the guitar, the thing that I like to do most is... Nothing. The most interesting place I have ever been to is... Everywhere. Of all my recordings, my favorite ones are... Oh. Of all my guitars, my favorite ones were... The last one my son has made. Thank you, Maestro, for the interview. <laughs> Thank you.